You're the father of my baby. What? Oh wow, this is gonna be a great interview. Uh, are we are we good, Bill? Hey guys, Blake Morris here for Shack News, and we are at TennoCon 2018, and I am here with the always awesome Rebecca Ford, Community Director for Warframe. How you doing? I'm good. I am here with a game called Warframe. Are you here with the game called Warframe? Uh, I'm not with Warframe, but I have played Warframe, and I know that it's a game. So. Are, this is exactly what we want to start with. This is perfect. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Jack News. This is a so this is the third year you guys have done this. Um, what's the experience been like uh, going into year three, and how has the event grown for you guys? We actually hired someone to plan the event this year. So the past two years has been myself and a. Uh, Megan on my team and a couple others working with a local event planner just to help us get all the logistics sorted out and I would do everything and now this year uh, earlier on in the year we hired um, an event coordinator like an actual role dedicated to it so I have been a lot less involved in all the day to, you know minute to minute things the badge orders the bag stuffing and all that but I've seen it happen and it's been awesome and that has taken a huge weight off my plate really to focus on bringing Tenno Live which is the stream that happens here to the best quality it can be. So what's it been like for you as like someone that's been fully involved in it as a fan to like, you know, see all the stuff that's coming and go behind the scenes? Like how hard is it for you to kind of keep keep the lid on stuff? This is why I started doing dev streams, so I didn't have to keep the lid on things. I was like, every two weeks we're showing everything. Like that's all there is to it. So uh, we've been doing that for five years now. So we're on like our hundred and something dev stream where we just sit and show everything. So it's worked well. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Um, yeah, like not every company live streams weekly like and shows off like so much behind the scenes stuff like you guys do. and. Not every company is definitely throwing, uh, you know, a convention just for like a singular game like this. This was something, well, we did it three years ago for the first time that I really wanted to do just because I felt like, and it's just, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I really feel like this is my family and I would want all my family in the same room for Christmas, just the same way I would for something we all love, which is Warframe. So it's very, very motivated from the idea of us maybe having a turkey dinner here one time. So it's almost like you guys wanted to have like a family reunion. Exactly. This is the type of day that I get to see someone's gamer tag and know I have spent 30 hours with them in game and here they are for the, you know, meeting face to face for the first time with me, with someone else in their clan. And you hear those stories year after year and every time I'm like, yes. And then, uh, you know, so obviously last year you guys did Planes of Eidolon. That was like huge, you know, going from kind of having these very level this very level-based MMO game to now like, oh, no, you're just going to go out into a world and explore that. And now you guys are ready to kind of enter that second chapter for, for the open world experience. Yeah, the adding another entry into open world is definitely um, anticipated, I'd say, but also going to be the most surprising thing. Even better than last year, I think. And you guys have seen a bit. How much do you know? So I know I know everything at this point, and everyone that's going to be seeing this is going to know everything since it'll be post be, post keynote. Are you going to bait me into revealing everything? What? Oh well, everyone will know everything by the time they see this. Well, then you know my blood type is A positive, and they know everything. They, they probably do. If they're fans of Warframe, they should know everything about your personal vitals. I don't even know my blood type, but okay. If this truly is lie, I believe you. I'm joking. Um, yeah, it. If hopefully you loved our fake out, our horrible theatrics where we say the devil was over it wasn't over at all it was just getting started so space is the next frontier yeah like let's talk a little bit like now you're gonna essentially you're sending people off into like spaceships with squads now like you're you're like hey it's time for you to be from going from it's almost like going from space ninjas to space pirates it's li literally how we describe it at the office is that it's this is the space piracy we've always wanted so and i think um you know if you heard steve talk at the keynote he really had me representing my future self for that because he hasn't talked yet but in this timeline he has see? okay so steve said at the keynote um it's really about coming back to a tight action coordinated game because we got a lot of a flack for open world saying this isn't warframe this is skyrim and skyrim i guess you know maybe players don't like that so this particular um <laughs> coming content is essentially the most true to Warframe's DNA of anything else, because this was the original idea for Dark Sector. This was the pie in the sky, Dark Sector vision was space combat, boarding ships, wreaking havoc, leaving with your squad. 
So this is like as true to what Warframe, you know, was meant to be as anything. That's totally a trip. And I actually, I've, I've spent some time like, you know, on the, on the wiki and stuff. So I actually knew that Dark Sector started off as like sort of this space drop, then like turned into this very grounded glaive based experience. Correct. Yeah. From there. So it's kind of like, come. this is like coming full circle for you guys then. It really is. And I mean, like for me to hear, like I'm living that dream right now because I wasn't around for that original inception and to watch the guys say those words it's like they're having a world lifted off their shoulders that they they've been holding on to for so long so it's really cool yeah, that's super duper awesome and then the other thing that i was really stoked about hoverboards yes oh yes oh thank you God. so much hoverboards are hoverboards are never a bad thing they are by far my favorite part of this demo in you know for the venus uh, or ballas part because the second i call it down i get my beats going it's just so yeah, you guys, you're, you're going to be able to do tricks with these boards, things like that. Is there going to be like anything like don't you, like a combo system? Are we going to be able to unlock Darth Maul and skate with him? <laughs> well, uh, I get that reference. Um, so it's hard to say because we've just added a more, like literally in the week before today for TennoCon, we changed the movement a little bit to just be a bit more vertical, right? Because Venus is so big, we want to be able to go up, down, side, side, so we can really make massive jumps. And I think from there, the customization is going to take priority. So we're going to, like, you will be able to do combos, of course. But what you're really going to be able to do is build, uh, we're calling them um, K drives. Uh, so the K drive for you could be one with a speed engine and a low gravity modifier or something. So you can kind of customize your ride. Uh, Get that big air. That's what, they, that's my nickname, big air. Other than hoverboards, you know, there's, there's poop in the game now. Yeah, I think when we wanted to make the endgame experience as good as possible, it was about taking fecal matter and really applying it to the terrain in such a robust fashion that you could really get a sense for the poop and the animal that had pooped it. And I think we've really done David Attenborough proud. That's awesome. But the poop is more about being able to like find these these, these new ecological uh, mission creatures, right? Like. It's not just poop, there is a hunting, well, we say hunting, but what we mean is conservation. We're looking at um, an environment that the corpus have invaded and are killing everything. And we need to save those creatures and relocate them. So that's where the poop comes in. Nice, there's a, there's a purpose to the poop. Just as in real life. So are we gonna be able to like, will there be poop based decorations for our, for our, for our, I think for our If we don't let our players put the poop in their ships, we will not be here having Tenocon next year because they will all quit the game. I, I really think that's the way you got to go. Yeah, we need uh, poop ships coming 2018. Poop-based economy coming to Warframe. Exactly. There's beetles that live off poop, so what's to say we can't thrive off it economically? What's the most exciting thing for you every year at TennoCon? I think Tenno Live is, like, that's all I can think about. So while my body is here, we're having this conversation. I, I, I'm so nervous to do that demo at the end of the night that I would... That's not excitement, that's nerves. I'm most excited to meet the players. But everything is just means to me not screwing up that demo. I guess what's what's next for Warframe? Like what do you what what do you guys got planned beyond Tenocon? Well, I think that the speculation of where the lore goes next is going to be the most fierce uh, speculation we'll see in Warframe's history after this day. Oh man, something cryptic, a very cryptic message. Well I think there's nowhere better to end an interview than with, with a cryptic message for the future. That's your nickname. Cryptic message for the future.